In this short tutorial, you're going to learn how to create and publish your first MetaReal project. The reason I'm creating this is I was looking for the exact thing. I came across MetaReal from my friend Ben Claremont's suggestion as an alternative to Matterport. I was looking for something that didn't cost as much, maybe had a free trial version and also a low monthly fee, and this was it. So I was excited. Ben was pushing for the fact that they had a button that says, do it for me which is great. All you do is take the 360 photos, upload them to the page, push the button. They do it for you. It's amazing. It looks great. Everything works out. I was stoked. Got a little cocky, sent a note to the client saying, I'll have this to you over the weekend. He said, are you sure? I said, absolutely. It's a whole text thing. I get back, upload the photos, push the button, boom, error message saying it's going to take a little longer than the, the normal two days uh, to finish this one. I was kind of screwed but I decided I was gonna to have to learn how to do the software, which I like to do anyway, so it's not a big deal. However, that meant my Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were gonna be busy doing this. All of Friday probably was just kind of wasted, trying things, stopping things, doing things. Uh, and then by Saturday and a little bit into Sunday, I kind of had a good grasp on it and I could have done it a lot faster if I just knew a few things. And that's what I wanna teach you here, the basics, to getting started and getting publishes. Is it gonna be perfect? No, probably not. Never the first time you do something like this, but it's gonna give you enough information to do from a small house to a complicated, uh, the, you know, the one I was working on was the whole wing of a hospital and I had no idea how to do it. And it turned out pretty good, good enough for the first one. And that's where I wanna get you to. I want you to get you to, to re feeling very comfortable uh, in, in getting something out the door, learning how to do it, and getting better for each one that you've done. Even I'm getting better. As I was doing the tutorial, I was learning a lot of things, uh, as you'll see. But there's certain steps that you have to go through. That's what I want to talk about now. We're going to use this treetop villa as an example. It's one floor, pretty compact, pretty easy to understand how to get from room to room and what all is involved with doing that. So one of the first things that I didn't know is there's a set height in the, in the software that it thinks your lens is at. And you have to go in and change it if you have anything other than, than what's in there, which I didn't have. You have to measure from the floor to the middle of the lens to get an accurate distance of how everything's going to line up. For this one, it's 53 and a half inches. So I'm going to go in and switch that and line everything up with that, with that height. So this is the main room of the cabin. Um, it's not huge, but it's not small. What I'm going to do, or what I would do with this job, is I would put, um, I would get a shot right in the center, so you can see all four walls, all four corners, all four ceilings, and I'd use this as the reference. And then what I'd do is I'd go into each corner and take another still photo. So for this room, I'd have five actual photos. It might be a little overkill, but it's best to have them than to not have them. All right, so you kind of have to improvise sometimes so since there's a there's a hallway behind the main room that you can't really see from when we did our reference photo so it would be hard to make um, that room in 3d or in 360 so what we're going to do is i'm actually going to make this hallway which is an l-shaped hallway another room and you'll see that then there's two other rooms off this hallway which i'll make the bathroom another room and the bedroom a room so total i'll have one bathroom, two bedroom, one hallway, and one main room on this floor for the example. So when you're doing a, a hallway with doors, I'm gonna actually make one set of doors, and this will be called bathroom door one, uh, and I'll attach it to the actual hallway. And when I make the bathroom room, instead of putting a door in, what I'm gonna do is go in the list, look for the bathroom one door, and hook it to uh, that room so that that the, the, the way that it works is the door the shared door is how the software knows where that room should go when you drag it onto the main stage so there's actually be one door for these two rooms and then I'll make bedroom door one put it here on the hallway and when I do the bedroom I'll then make that door the bedroom one door and it'll know that this bedroom goes on the edge here the bathroom goes on the edge there and it should all come out together so it's 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 pretty simple if you know how to do it the good news is every room follows the same steps and that's important to keep in mind import the photo okay 
level to the grid, uh, level vertically with the vertical lines, create an accurate floor plan, add the geometric shapes that uh, are like bumps in the room that'll, that'll give it some depth, but also it'll let you know where you are in the room. And then add new photos to be able to jump around those rooms and be very aware of which doors connect where. So those are the steps, and this is what each one of those means. Okay, the high level steps. Once you have all your equi rectangular or flat uh, photos from your 360 camera uploaded into the project, what I do is I create a new room and I add the reference photo from the add photo button. What that's gonna do, you can add them all in there, but I just like to keep it kind of simple at first. So I add the reference photo, which is probably the one in the middle of the room that you can see most of the angles from. After you add the photo, what you're gonna do is you're gonna level it to the grid. Uh, that'll just kind of orient things so that they're, they're all kind of going, not in the same direction, but on a, on a, on a flat line. So you, you, uh, you have to get this, the red leveling marker and go into plan view so you're looking down at it. It doesn't always show up you know, on the first time, maybe a little bug, but it, it'll get there if you go out of it, into it, grab the other leveling tool, but it'll be there. Once it's there, grab it and align it to a flat portion of the bottom wall one end to the other, it'll snap it to the grid. Once that's done, you start going into panorama mode and you grab the, the leveling, you click the leveling buttons and it'll bring the blue ones. The blue ones are for um, vertical lines. So try to find the, a, a very, very straight vertical lines, window sills, door jams, corners, everything like that is a great uh, vertical line. Keep it, make it accurate, and you'll see things can kind of go around the room. I try to get one on every wall, and it'll snap it kind of vertically into place. So now you have the bottom one aligned to the grid, and you have it vertically snapped. The next thing you, you do in every one is create the floor plan. That's where you take this tool, and you go around every corner until you trace the actual bottom base floor plan of the room. Um, and something very important here is it gives you uh, kind of a compass type thing for right angles. Built, rooms are built at right angles. Be very kind of conscious about getting all these corners at right angles because at the end, your, your room will be square and it'll look normal and, we'll, and it'll be easier to work with. So take a lot of time, get this absolutely as close to correct as you can get it, and then move up, move the, the lines at the top to the ceiling I'm still learning how to kind of do vaulted ceilings and stuff like that, or one ceiling that's higher than the other, but for now I just kind of put them all up to the height of the ceiling, and then you have your room. Next, go in and put in a few um, geometric shapes. So that's the sphere for like tables, and that's the square for beds, and try to match them exactly uh, where they are in the room and put a couple in as identifiers, because you'll see when you add a new photo to this, what you can do when you're snapping it or uh, rotating the next photo into place is you can kind of use the, some of the only ways you know where you are in the room are by those geometric shapes. Um, and it helps you uh, orient things a lot easier if you have a couple of those in there so you know where you're doing. So, okay, so that, now that you've got those in, you basically are done with that photo. Add another photo. And then you don't really need to go through all the steps, but what you do need to do is you need to align these two uh, images. So what you're going to do is you're going to, this. I started with the snap one, but that was very confusing. So I went to the next one down, and this one has helped a lot, uh, where you move and you rotate the panorama. So it's very easy to pick a pivot point and just rotate it around. Um, you can shrink and, and, you know, resize it, but I try not to because uh, they should all kind of fit. But this one lets you orient it in such a way that they all line up. And if you did the first one right, all the things, doors, everything else should fit inside that one. And then you've got a second place to jump around in that room. Uh, speaking of doors, again, you make a door in the room, in one of the rooms, and then 
if you're going to add it somewhere else or if it's a doorway to a hallway, then that hallway would just use that door that you already made for the room. And when you drop it into the stage, it'll all line up, hopefully. Uh, just make sure they're open, make sure they're similar doors, and the doors, when they're green, means they're working. When they're red, it's probably not in the right plane or whatever, and you just move it around until you get it working right. Um, and then when you go to the stage, when you drag things onto the, the, the tour, edit tour, um, all your rooms will be on one side, you drag in the main one, and then if you've done the doors and all the connecting things correctly, they should line up. You're still allowed to move them around uh, physically without, you know, on your own, uh, if they don't match up perfectly, but it, uh, it helps to try to get them as accurate as possible. So once you have them on the stage and they're all lined up and looking good, you can still go back into plan view, move around the anchor points for the, for the door, or I mean for the, for the bottom floor plan to kind of make things fit. In this one, I actually kind of even uh, had to elongate some things like the deck because it wasn't lining up to the bedroom door because it was kind of a, there's some closets and stuff in there that I didn't take into account for. So I kind of went in and kind of uh, rigged some things and moved things around and you, it, it, it takes a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of work to get everything to line up when you're not exactly sure how to do each room. But in the end, this is one that I did for the, the, the place and I think it looks really good. Let me know if you have any questions and I think this is a great tool. It's not for everybody. People love Matterport. This was exactly what I was looking for. I just wish I had known a couple of things before I went in uh, and it would have made making that first tutorial uh, or virtual uh, tour so much easier. And that's exactly what I hope this did. So I hope it makes your tour creation a ton easier. It's not a huge in-depth tutorial, but it should teach you everything you need to know just to get started and get that first project out the door. So let me know what you think, and I hope, it, I hope you enjoyed it.